Good morning, students. Uh, I'm Dr. Mitta from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Shibalaji Dental College and Hospital. And my topic of presentation today is going to be about pulpotomy and apexification. So we'll see in detail in today's presentation about pulpotomy and apexification. So basically, what is pulpotomy? Pulpotomy is nothing but a procedure in which only the inflamed, uh, infected coronal pulp is completely excised. So that is pulpotomy. Whereas we preserve the healthy pulp inside the radicular dentin in order to maintain the vitality of the particular affected tooth. Apexification is a procedure which is done in a tooth with an open apex, a tooth like an immature tooth, a young permanent tooth which is immature with a wide open apex and a blunderbuss canal. We, uh, uh, we artificially create a calcific barrier at the apex so that we can do the obturation procedure. So this is generally about pulpotomy and apexification. So the contents of today's class is going to be about the definition of pulpotomy and apexification. We are going to see in detail the classification and objectives. What are the indications and contraindications individually of pulpotomy and apexification? What are all the medicaments used? What is the actual clinical procedure? What is the mechanism of action? What is the treatment outcome and prognosis? We'll also see uh, what is revascularization and we'll end up with a conclusion. So pulpotomy is nothing, it can be defined as a procedure in which the exposed coronal vital pulp is surgically removed. So as a means to preserve the vitality of the remaining uh, of the uh, pulp, which is remaining in the radicular dentin. So it can also be described as a surgical procedure wherein the partly or the completely inflamed coronal pulp is completely removed till the level of the healthy pulp tissue, thereby retaining the vital pulp inside the root canal that is inside the radicular dentin, which is followed by the placement of a, of a protective medicament over the excise. So what are the objectives of pulpotomy? You preserve the vitality of the radicular pulp. Uh, it gives relief of pain in patients with acute pulpalgia and if any inflammatory changes are present. It ensures the continuation of apexogenesis. Uh, that is, it ensures the continuation of the normal root development in an immature permanent teeth. That is nothing but apexogenesis, thereby retaining the vitality of the pulp in the radicular dentin. So the indications for pulpotomy is mainly a mechanical or a carious expo exposure in a permanent teeth with incomplete root fracture. The tooth may be asymptomatic and vital. There is no radiographic evidence of root resorption or periradicular uh, periodontitis. Uh, when there is a traumatic exposure of long duration, especially in a young permanent teeth, and when the coronal pulp is likely to be inflamed, or the permanent anterior teeth uh, it has a wide open apex, uh, it has sustained a fracture during an automobile or a road traffic accident or a sports injury, and the apical three to four mm of the pulp tissue is vital, and hence the root development can be completed. When carious uh, exposure occurs in an asymptomatic primary tooth where the pulp is affected, when there's chronic hyperplastic pulpitis, also called as a pulp polyp, when, uh, where, wherein only the coronal pulp is inflamed, especially in a young permanent teeth, and uh, when continued root development is evident radiographically. So these are the indications for pulpotomy. Coming to the contraindications, so when the patient is having irreversible pulpitis, that is when there is abnormal sensitivity to heat and cold, when there is a pulpalgia, when there is synonymous to percussion or palpation, especially because of any pulpal disease, when uh, periodically you can see the radiographic changes uh, uh, because of the extension of pulpal dis disease into the periradicular tissues, when there is a marked constriction in the pulp chamber or inside the root canal, it is evident radiographically as a form of a calcification. When any abnormal mobility is present in the particular tooth, when there's presence of external or internal root resorption, when there's pulpal necrosis, when there is an endoperior lesion or when there is a pulpoperiodontic lesion, and uh, when you need to place an endodontic post for the placement of a final restriction. So all these are the contraindications for pulpotomy. Coming to the classification, so pulpotomy can be classified broadly into uh, two types, based upon the amount of pulp tissue removed and based upon the type of medicament employed. So based upon the amount of pulp tissue removed, we have three types, which is cervical pulpotomy, wherein the inflamed coronal pulp after the cervical region is completely removed. And in partial pulpotomy, also known as cervix pulpotomy, only a part of the inflamed coronal pulp is removed, that is, only partially the coronal pulp is removed. 
Then depending upon the type of medicament used, you can classify it into calcium hydroxide pulpotomy, MTA pulpotomy, or formocosol pulpotomy. Depending upon the medicaments and the materials used for pulpotomy, you have a formocosol or glutaride, which is mainly used for fixation of the pulp tissue. You have your calcium hydroxide or MTA, which helps in the formation of a heart tissue barrier. Ferric sulfate also causes fixation of the pulp tissue. You have bone morph morphogenic protein, freeze-dried bone, osteogenic protein. All these are osteoinductive materials. There is lasers and electrosurgery, especially used for hemorrhage control, and they are also used for pulp tissue excision. What is seen in this picture is your MTA, it's pro-root MTA. It is available as a powder in a sachet form and a special type of liquid that is provided by the manufacturer himself. The material is mixed on a glass lab to obtain a wet stand like consistency. So what you see here is your bone morphogenic protein. This is your formoclosol and this is your calcium hydroxide, which is available directly in a syringe form, which can be syringed directly into the pulp. Coming to the clinical procedure for cervical pulpotomy, when the com complete pulp, coronal pulp is completely removed. Okay, the first step, uh, the, uh, the first step uh, in this cervical pulpotomy, you take a preoperative radiograph and pulp vitality testing is done. Uh, then you have to administer LA. Once your local anesthesia has administered, the tooth is isolated with a rubber dam. Then uh, the caries is completely removed with the help of a round bar and slowly access is gained into the pulp chamber. Now, the roof of the pulp chamber is completely removed with a round bar. And uh, once your hemorrhage is controlled, you can control the hemorrhage by using lasers or electrosurgery or by uh, uh, applying pressure with a moist cotton pellet soaked in your local anesthetic solution. Or you can also use your 6% sodium hypochlorite. So once hemorrhage control is achieved, now the coronal pulp tissue is completely removed with the help of a sharp spoon excavator number 31L and a large round bar operating at a slow speed or a diamond drill operating at a high speed. Or you can also use lasers and, and electrosurgery to completely remove the coronal pulp. Once the coronal pulp is completely removed and, and hemorrhage control is perfectly achieved, the next step is the placement of the medicament. For the medicament is approximately placed at the level of your uh, cemento enamel junction, that is exactly at the level of the root canal orifice without disturbing the uh, vital pulp, which is present inside the radicular tendon. So the medicament placed is here. You can either place a calcium hydroxide or MTA or your formocosol. So the calcium hydroxide is applied uh, to the uh, sterile uh, pulp at the level of the root canal with the help of a sterile cotton. And one to two mm of the pulp chamber is filled with your calcium hydroxide. So this calcium hydroxide can be directly syringed uh, from the tube that is available. Otherwise, if it is available as a powder form, it can be mixed with saline, it can be mixed with distilled water, can also be mixed with your local anesthetic solution or uh, glycerin. Or generally what we use is the one which is available in a paste form. Uh, the uh, base here is methacellulose. So the trade name here is metafex or even dicol. So dicol, if you see, it is available as a two-paste system, base paste and a cactus paste. Both is mixed together. And then you can get a uniform color and you can apply it directly at the level of the amputated pulp. Or you can use MTA, which is nothing but your mineral trioxide aggregate. So MTA, with the help of a special gun, which is called as a Messing's gun, which is a special carrier for MTA that can be used. And then you can place MTA at the level of your CJ or formocosol. So formocosol solution, you can soak it with the cotton and place it at the level of the root canal orifice. So this uh, pharmacosol, the idea of using pharmacosol for pulpotomy was given by Sweet in the year 1930. It is mainly used in uh, primary teeth. The cotton pellet soaked with pharmacosol is kept in place for three to five minutes. The main disadvantage is carcinogenicity. genicity. The solution which is used is called as a Buckley's pharmacosol solution, which contains 19% formalin, 35% uh, cresol, and 15% glycerin. The next step is a placement of GAC uh, as a, a, at the layer, uh, at the level of your CJ, or you can also place your probal compomer. Uh, both GAC and probal compomer is used as a base, which is placed over the medicament that you have placed directly on the amputated pulp. Here it can be uh, over MTA or over your catchment oxide, uh, GAC or probal composite is placed as a base. Then the permanent restoration is placed. Now the rubber dam is removed, occlusion is checked, and a post-operative radiograph is taken. 
It is very important to recall the patient after three months and check for the presence of any clinical symptoms to take a radiograph and also you test the pulp vitality. Uh, in case there is uh, necrosis of the pulp or death of the pulp, then you have to proceed for endodontic therapy. In case the apex, if it's a young common teeth and if it is an immature wide open apex, then you have to do apexification, wherein you create a calcific barrier uh, uh, at the end of the root tip. So this is a picture to summarize your cervical pulpotomy. So you can see here there's a uh, caries lesion which is uh, involving the coronal pulp. Now you uh, check for the pulp, vital pulp vitality. Now LA is administered. Once LA is administered, your rubber dam is placed. The tooth is isolated. You can see your rubber dam frame here in a rubber dam sheet. The tooth is isolated with a rubber dam clamp. Now uh, you gain entry into the pulp chamber. Do the access opening, gain entry into the pulp chamber with a large round work. So completely remove the um, caries tissue and uh, also remove the inflamed coronal pulp. Once the inflamed coronal pulp is completely removed, you achieve hemorrhage control with the help of a cotton pellet uh, soaked with your 6% uh, sodium hypochlorite solution or cotton pellet soaked with your uh, LA solution. Or you can also use tasers uh, so as to achieve the hemorrhage control. Once hemorrhage control is achieved, then you place a layer of your calcium hydroxide directly at the level of your CJ, that is exactly over the root canal orifice. So once that is done, then you place your GAC as a protective base over which you can place a permanent restriction, which may be composite restriction. So ideally what you get is your vital pulp inside the root canal, which is healthy inside the radicular dentin, your healthy vital pulp which is preserved. On, at the level of your CEJ, you have placed your medicament, which can be calcium hydroxide or MTA as per your choice. Then, which is followed by the placement of your GAC as a base over which your composite restoration is placed. Coming to partial pulpotomy or cervix pulpotomy, here only a portion of the inflamed coronal pulp is removed. Here, uh, this procedure is indicated when the coronal pulp is exposed by trauma or any operative procedures accidentally you have exposed the pulp or when there is a caries affecting only a part of the coronal pulp. Here, unaffected vital pulp is preserved inside the root canal, same. Only a portion of the infected uh, tissue that offers temporary relief of pulpalgia and the remaining healthy tissues undergoes complete apexogenesis in this procedure. In, uh, it's indicated especially for crown fractures when there's a pinpoint pulpal exposure and it can be treated within 15 to 18 hours or when caries exposure occurs in an asymptomatic permanent teeth with an open apex. So coming to the uh, picture for partial pulpotomy, we are also the same. So when there is a caries lesion or when there is a pinpoint pulpal exposure that is uh, involving the coronal pulp, here again, you have to administer your uh, LA. Once LA is administered, you do the isolation on the rubber dam. Then you gain entry into the pulp chamber, do the access opening. Here, only a part of the affected coronal pulp is removed, not the complete coronal pulp tissue is removed. So only that part which is affected is carefully removed. So once that is done, hemorrhage control is achieved, then your medicament, your can be a calcium adductor or MTA is placed, over which you place your GAC as a base, followed by the uh, layering of composite resin restriction. So this you see here, the advantage is you're again, uh, you're ensuring the completion of the root development in case it is an open apex tooth, you're ensuring the Apexogenesis, wherein the physiologically the root formation is completed. And the main advantage is you preserve the vitality of the pulp inside the radical dentin. Coming to the difference between a partial pulpotomy and a cervical pulpotomy, it is indicated in caries or traumatic exposures. Here also it is indicated in caries and traumatic exposures. Here it is done when the pulp is vital, only the superficial 1 to 2 mm of the coronal pulp tissue, uh, infected pulp tissue is. Uh, only one to two mm of the coronal pulp tissue is inflamed. So only that part of the inflamed coronal pulp is completely removed. Here in, uh, in complete pulpotomy, uh, cervical pulpotomy, the complete coronal pulp tissue is removed up to the level of your semi-dynamic junction. Here it is a definite treatment. It is a definitive, it is a temporary, it's an emergency treatment. Here the pulp tissue is excised at the level of the pulp horn and uh, uh, at the level of the pulp horn or only superficial one to two mm of the pulp is removed. Here the pulp tissue is completely excised up to the cervical level, that is up to the level of your cemental enamel junction. Here bleeding during excision, it should stop within two minutes. 
If bleeding continues more than two minutes, it indicates deeper inflammation and it needs more tissue removal. Here, retention of the medicament is better because a shallow cavity is created after excision. Here, it preserves the celtic zone in the coronal pulp because of minimum excision and there's better healing potential. Here, it removes the celtic zone due to radical excision or so the healing potential is dependent on the radical pulp only. Physiological acquisition of dentin is possible in the cervical area is maintained Thus, the tooth is not prone to fracture. There is no physiological opposition of dentin in the cervical area. So the tooth may be prone to fracture. The natural color and the transistency of the tooth is preserved. Here, the tooth discolors over a period of time. But retention of the pulp tissue in the crown allows the vitality test to follow. Here, there is lack of coronal uh, pulp. It does not provide any reliable results in the vitality test. And this is a relatively simpler technique here, there is deeper penetration uh, problems uh, presence in access cavity operation and the visibility and the placement of medicament. Here, the chances of pulp canal operation uh, as a result of calcification is less. Here, the chances of pulp canal operation by calcification is more. To know, here, there is not necessary to re-enter to alter the calcific bridge formation. Here, it may be necessary to re-enter the root canal if any uh, canal sclerosis or if canal calcifications are seen. So this is a picture to show you the formicosal uh, pulpotomy in a primary tooth. So you have your caries involving the pulp and only the coronal pulp is removed with the help of a, a large round work and you achieve control bleeding, wherein uh, achieve control of the hemorrhage bleeding. Then you place a, a cotton pellet soaked with your formicosal solution uh, at the level of your semi-dynamical junction. Once uh, that is done, you place your medicament, which may be a calcium hydroxide, over which you place a temporary restriction. What is the mechanism of action? What is the idea of using your catchment oxide or MTA for uh, pulpotomy? It has main antibacterial property. It has the ability to form a hard tissue barrier. That is, it has the ability to generate a reparative dentin because of its alkaline pH, which is 11. It dissociates into calcium and hydroxyl ions. So whenever the uh, tissue uh, comes in uh, contact with the uh, deranged or distorted cells, there is a formation of zone of application and the subadjacent apical tissue undergoes necrosis. There is a formation of a zone of coagulative necrosis. So this uh, form, uh, formation of a zone of coagulative necrosis acts as a low grade irritant. So this in turn acts as a stimulus for the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. So these undifferentiated uh, mesenchymal cells differentiate into odontoblasts and they lay down the reparative dentin bridge. So there are three theories behind the mechanism of heart tissue formation by calcium hydroxide, behind the mechanism of your reparative bridge formation by calcium hydroxide. So it is the alkaline phosphorus theory, the ceiling theory, and the matrix specific theory. So this is enhanced by the action of the enzyme alkaline phosphorus. So it increases the blood derived concentration of calcium ions at the reparative site. It also decreases the level of inhibitory pyrophosphorase and increases the mineralization by activating the enzyme pyrophosphorase. It also neutralizes the uh, lactic acid production by the osteoclast and thereby it prevents further demineralization. So, the, however, the dentin base that is formed by uh, calcium hydroxide is discontinuous with many tunnel defects. What is the mechanism of antibacterial action of calcium hydroxide? It is mainly by destruction of the bacterial cell membrane. It causes the denaturation of bacterial proteins. Uh, it causes the inhibition of the DNA replication of bacteria. It decreases the ability of the bacteria to cause uh, tissue destruction, mainly by altering the bacterial uh, lipid polysaccharides. So why do we use MTA? What is MTA? Why do we use MTA? MTA is mineral trioxide aggregate. As I told you, it is available uh, as a powder form. So the powder contains dicalcium silicate, tricalcium silicate, tetracalcium aluminum ferrite, uh, tricalcium aluminate, tricalcium oxide, silicon dioxide, bismuth oxide. So it is mixed with a special liquid. So this special liquid sets within uh, three to four hours. So this uh, increases uh, the setting time is uh, ideally from uh, three hours, it is increased to about the pH of the cement at the end of three hours, it is increased to about 10.2 to 12.5. So this is ideally neutral pH. So this uh, neutral pH stimulates the reparodentin formation. So the dentin bridge that is formed by MTL is more thicker, it is more tubular, it is continuous, and it is of better quality, and it is more hard when compared to that of uh, the dentin bridge formed by the 
cytomegalopsin. So here, uh, MPA, it stimulates the release of cytokines, mainly are interleukin-1 alpha, interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6. So these are basically involved in bone metabolism. So this stimulates the, prop uh, the propagation of the osteoblast. So these osteoblasts act as a substrate for the uh, uh, formation of the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells to lay down the repetitive dendrite. So why do we use pharmacosol uh, in your pulpotomy? The basic mechanism is necrosis. It causes a fixation of the pulp tissue. At the same time, it has got antibacterial action. So the fixation of the pulp tissue occurs in 7 to 14 days. So histologically, there is a formation of the zone of necrosis and there is a zone of inflammation that diffuses into the normal pulp tissue. The main disadvantage of using pharmacosol is carcinogenicity, mutagenicity, deeper penetration, and sometimes internal desorption can occur and calcific metamorphosis can also occur. So this is a table uh, to compare calcium hydroxide and mineral trioxide aggregate. The calcium hydroxide was introduced in 1920. So whereas mineral trioxide aggregate was recently introduced in 1993 by uh, Tara Benazar. So calcium hydroxide is available as a powder. You also, it's also available in paste form. Uh, however, the powder, it can be mi mixed with whatever the aqueous or non-aqueous uh, non vehicles. Whereas your mineral trioxide aggregate is available in powder form and it is mixed with a special liquid that is provided by the manufacturer himself. Calcium hydroxide is easy to manipulate, especially when it's mixed with the non aqueous vehicles. Here, mineral trioxide aggregate, the mix is very grainy. It is difficult to handle. Uh, calcium hydroxide has an uh, alkaline pH of 11. Uh, mineral trioxide aggregate also has an alkaline pH of 10.52. However, the pH increases to 12.5 at the end of three hours. Calcium hydroxide is highly soluble when it's exposed to saliva and oral fluid. Mineral trioxide aggregate is very much stable. It is least soluble. Calcium hydroxide is a weak material, whereas mineral trioxide aggregate has a very high composite strength. Uh, the composite strength is equivalent to that of reinforced zinc oxidogenol. Calcium hydroxide, it deteriorates and disintegrates over a period of time in the oral cavity, whereas mineral trioxide aggregate does not change. It, uh, in fact, chemically bonds to the tooth structure. Calcium hydroxide does not adhere to the dentin. Here in calcium hydroxide, the micro leakage is more, whereas in mineral trioxide aggregate, the seal is better, the marginal leakage is minimized. Uh, calcium hydroxide sets quickly. The main disadvantage with mineral trioxide aggregate, it takes a long time to set, about three to four hours, sometimes even one day. Calcium hydroxide possesses a very good antibacterial activity. The um, uh, antibacterial activity of mineral trioxide aggregate is relatively less. Uh, calcium hydroxide, it is not expensive. Mineral trioxide aggregate is more expensive. Coming to the role of calcium hydroxide and MTA as a bulk protective agent uh, in its ability to stimulate the rapid dentin formation. So if, in, if you, when you see here in calcium hydroxide, the rapid dentin bridge formed by calcium hydroxide is atypical, it is atubular, it is not thick, it is not uniform. Whereas the dentin bridge formed by MTA is very tubular, it is thick, it is hard, it is uniform. In calcium hydroxide, tunnel defects are seen in the dentin bridge formation. Whereas in MTA, no tunnel defects are seen. The dentin bridge uh, barrier formation is relatively slow, whereas the dentin uh, bridge barrier that is formed with the MTA is very, very fast. Here, uh, in uh, the pulp underneath uh, this dentin bridge formed by calcium hydroxide exhibits severe inflammation, whereas MTA is highly biocompatible. No inflammation is seen in the pulp underlying the dentin bridge that is formed by MTA. Here, pulp bleeding should stop or the clot itself should be removed before it is placed over the pulp. Here, the clot and the bleeding does not interfere with the setting of the MTA. In fact, the blood or the clot bleeding enables the setting of the MTA. Here, the, for calcium hydroxide, the permanent seal and the restoration should be placed in the same setting, whereas MTA it is not possible. It should be done in multiple visits. Here, for calcium hydroxide, permanent uh, restoration with composite resin is possible. Uh, only after it is completely set, whereas for MTA uh, uh, itself, it has got chemical addition to the tooth structure, hence composite restoration can be placed over your uh, MTA. Now coming to apexification, what is apexification? It can be defined as a method wherein a calcific barrier in a root with an open apex is generated, wherein uh, there is continuation of the apical development in an incomplete root or in a tooth with a necrotic pulp or an immature pulpus tooth. In short, apexo, uh, uh, apexogenesis means physiological development of the root. That is, naturally, we induce the 
uh, naturally the physiological root development is allowed to occur that is apexogenesis in apexification we are creating a cassavic barrier at the root tip so that we can place the obstetrical material so this procedure involves the debridement of the root canal short of the apex which uh, should not disturb the apical tissues then you place a biocompatible agent here it can be calcium hydroxide and mta or mta which stimulates your heart tissue formation so the objectives if you see here it mainly induces a natural calcific barrier at the apex it may occur exactly at the apex or it is short of the apex it gives you a apical stop so that you can compact your obstetrical material it induces the natural tooth lengthening process by preserving and stimulating the cortex epithelial root sheath so it's mainly indicated in a young permanent teeth with the blandibus canal or a necrotic pulp so when signs and symptoms suggest that when signs and symptoms suggest uh, irreversible pulpitis then you can do your uh, apexification procedure when there is persistent uh, when you do a, a pulp vitality testing it indicates the tooth is non vital when there is presence of swelling when there is tenderness when there is mobility when there is a, a pulpy periodic lesion when there is no evidence of horizontal or vertical root fracture what are the medicaments that is used for apexification mainly a calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide can be mixed with uh, a caffeinated paramonoclonal it can be mixed with presinol anesthetic solution or normal saline it can also mix with the uh, zinc oxide paste or antibiotic paste also you can mix with tricalcium phosphate or collagen calcium phosphate gel or mta is most ideal osteogenic protein bone morphogenic protein free style allogenic collagen dentin powder or true bone ceramic so now what is the clinical procedure for doing multiple visit apexification with calcium hydroxide the duration of this is around 6 months to 4 years so first you take a preoperative radiograph you do a pulp vitality testing the tooth is non vital is confirmed now the tooth is uh, anesthetized you isolate the tooth with the rubber dam gain access into the pulp chamber the root canal is irrigated with your uh, sterile water or a sterile saline solution to take a radiograph it should be 2 uh, mm short of the apex to prevent injury to the periapical tissues cleaning and shaping is done to remove the necrotic pulp and uh, but make sure the walls are very thin and fragile care should be taken uh, to prevent any fracture or perforation the root canal is dyed with absorbent uh, points uh, care should be taken not to injure the periapical uh, tissues a thick mix of uh, calcium hydroxide may be mixed with sterile water or anesthetic solution or sometimes even barium sulfide is added to increase the radio opacity now this thick mix of calcium hydroxide is picked up with the amalgam carrier and it is slowly injected into the pulp chamber then with the help of the of, a, of the plugger you compact the calcium hydroxide mix with the periapical tissue and the ent- and the entire canal is filled with your calcium hydroxide then the access cavity is sealed with a temporary restorative material and a post operative radiograph is taken it is important to recall the patient after 3 months and you check for the radiographically uh, radiographically first you uh, check the formation of a calcific uh, barrier or a bridge at the apex uh, if not a freshly mixed cement of calcium hydroxide is placed in the canal apexification is complete in 6 months or 2 years or sometimes 4 years after apexification is complete the root canal is obstructed with a thermoplasticized gutta percha now we see the uh, apexification with uh, calcium hydroxide see the picture for the apexification with the uh, uh, calcium hydroxide so uh, first you gain entry uh, in open the uh, uh, pulp chamber open the uh, uh, once the la is administered you uh, slowly do an access opening and gain entry into the pulp chamber this is a tooth with an immature open apex it's a blandibus canal wide open apex so uh, uh, do the cleaning and shaping once after the working length is determined once the cleaning and shaping is uh, completed uh, you have to take care not to induce any fractures or perforations on the fragile radical dentin walls the uh, once the canal is dried with absorbent paper points you have to uh, uh, place a thick mix of calcium hydroxide at the apex so the apical uh, 3 to 4 mm you place a thick mix of calcium hydroxide at the apex the entire root canal is filled with the calcium hydroxide as an independent medicament and then you close the uh, canal you, uh, place a layer of uh, gaf as a base at the level of root canal orifice and uh, seal the cavity with the 
temporary restoration and recall the patient. So at the end of six months, when you recall the patient, the following changes can be seen uh, radiographically. Either you can see a continued closure of the root canal uh, up to the apex, uh, which appears as a normal formation of the root, or sometimes the apex closes without any change in the canal space, but the root canal remains flaring as seen in this picture. The third outcome is you can have a thin hard tissue barrier at the apex, or you can see a calcific material at or near the apex, or sometimes a thin hard tissue barrier can be seen 2 mm short of the apex, or sometimes the fifth outcome is no evidence of calcific barrier that is seen in the radiograph. Clinically also when you check, there is no evidence of any calcific barrier formation, and sometimes a periapical lesion may persist, or it can be increased in size when compared to the previous existing lesion. So that time you have to do a, a, a extraction for the patient. Coming to us, the single visit apexification with the MTA, first LA is administered, tooth is isolated with rubber dam, axis cavity is prepared, the pulp tissue is removed with the help of a barb growth or a hedge file, uh, remove the necrotic pulp tissue, determine the working length, two mm short of the apex, thinning and shaping is done. Uh, it's important to achieve minimum dentin removal, gentle supplemental filing is important. Uh, irrigation is done with your sodium hypochlorite. This is a picture of your barbed brooch or rafts, and this is a picture of your H files. Paper point is used to completely dry the canal. MT, as I told you, is available as a powder and with a special liquid. You have to mix it on a, on a glass lab. And then it is uh, picked up with a special gun, which is called as a Messing's gun, also known as an MTA carrier. And with the help of this gun, you condense a thick mix of MTA in the apical 3 to 4 mm. And uh, a moist cotton pellet, it is important to place a moist cotton pellet at the level of the root canal orifice uh, to ensure the setting of the MTA. And then you place a temporary restoration in your axis cavity and seal the uh, pulp chamber. You recall the patient after three days, and now you remove the moist cotton pellet at the level of your, uh, uh, which are placed at the level of the root canal orifice. And then uh, inside the remaining part of the canal, you obturate it with the thermoplasticite cuticulture. This is uh, your uh, plugger, which is your MTA hand plugger with shoulders plugger, wherein you can compact the MTA into the root canal in the apical 3 to 4 mm. So this is the uh, picture of the uh, Messing's gun. Okay, this is a special carrier gun which is used to carry the MTA. This is a picture to summarize the apexification with MTA. So it is a multiple visit uh, procedure. It cannot be done in a single visit. So once the pulp tissue, the necrotic pulp tissue is completely removed, cleaning and shaping is done. So with the help of the Messing's gun, you compact the MTA with the, uh, the apical 3 to 4 mm. And then you place a moist cotton pellet at the level of your uh, root canal orifice. Then you place a temporary restriction and you send the patient. When the patient comes after three days, you check for the uh, calcific which formed at the apex. And then you obturate the canal with your thermoplasticized obturation or even your roll cone technique can be used to obturate the canal with gutta percha. And then you can place your permanent restriction. If necessary, an uh, endodontic post or FRC post can be placed inside to reinforce the uh, weakened coronal tooth structure. So you can see here, apexification is completed with MTA, a uh, hard uh, calcific bridge is formed at the apex. So what is the difference between calcium dioxide and MTA when it is used for apexification procedure? The hard tissue barrier formed at the apex is slow and it is very thick. The hard tissue barrier form is very uh, faster, it is thick and it is very, very strong. Severe uh, periapical infection with excessive exudate is not favorable for placement of calcium metoxide because it dissolves the material faster. Here, the periapical exudate does not uh, uh, affect the setting of the MTA. It can be placed even when there is a presence of some periapical exudate. Here in calcium metoxide, inflammation is evident in the periapical tissue, whereas when you place MTA at apex, no periapical tissue inflammation is seen. Calcium dioxide has to be uh, replenished at regular intervals, that is at least three to six months intervals. It is important to replenish the calcium dioxide. Here, MTA, it can be done in a single visit application with the barrier technique. You should wait, with calcium dioxide, you should wait for the natural uh, barrier before obstruction with gutta percha. Here, for MTA, you can complete the obstruction uh, with gutta percha immediately after the setting of the MTA is achieved. 
Here, for tratonide oxide, reinforcement of the canal during the apex fixation process is not possible, so the tooth is prone to fracture. Whereas for MTA, reinforcement of the canal with adhesive resin is possible because it does not uh, affect the uh, interference with the chemical addition of the adhesive resin to the tooth structure. Coming to revascularization, revascularization is a procedure in which uh, it re-establishes the vitality of the non-vital tooth to allow repair and regeneration of the pulp tissue. So what you do, uh, it's, uh, it's, if it's a tooth with a wide open apex, you uh, force the file beyond the periapical, uh, periapical tissue and you induce bleeding, allow the blood clot, induce bleeding, allow the blood clot to be uh, formed inside the radical dentin and a sterile uh, a tissue matrix is provided on which a new uh, on which new cells grow and pulp vitality is re-established. So this concept of revascularization or pulp regeneration was introduced by OSPI in the year 1981. So here, uh, this is the main advantage of this technique is that we, we ensure the completion of a, of a root development in a young community with an open apex. But so how this procedure is done? So first a preoperative radiograph is taken, the tooth is anesthetized, isolated with rubber dam. Now access is gained in, into the pulp chamber. The canal is irrigated with a sterile sodium apocalypse solution. Working on the radiograph is taken and a sterile a 23 gauge uh, needle is taken or a K file is used and, uh, and the rubber stopper is set two millimeter beyond the working length. So basically you, you use your K file and you uh, push uh, uh, you force it beyond the apex and it is the k is pushed into the periradical tissues so as to induce a bleeding into the root canal. So once the blood completely fills the pulp chamber and the radicular canal, a, uh, a dry cotton pellet is inserted uh, 3 to 4 mm into the canal at the level of the root canal orifice. This allows the formation of the blood clot to occur in the apical two-thirds. It is allowed to remain in the canal, the, the, the cotton pellet is allowed to remain in the canal for 7 to 10 minutes so that the blood clot is formed inside the radical dentin. Here, next, the rupera orifice is sealed with MTA and is extending 4 mm into the coronal portion of the canal. GAC or composite can be used to seal the excess cavity when the post orbital radiograph is taken and then you recall the patient after 6 months and you check for clinical and, uh, and clinical and uh, Radiographically, you have to evaluate the patient and check for the vitality. So this picture is nothing but shows your stem cells from the apical papilla. So this helps in your pulpal regeneration. So it basically acts as a scaffold, okay? But so the blood clot acts as a scaffold for your stem cells from the apical papilla. So these cells can differentiate from, uh, into undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, which in turn will lay down the pulp. So at the level of the rupinal orifice, you place your MTE and composite uh, restoration is placed to achieve a coronal seed. So the root formation is completed and vitality of the pulp is also preserved. Mechanism of revascularization: two vital pulp cells remain at the apical end. They proliferate to form a newly formed matrix. They differentiate into odontoblasts under the influence of the cells from the perfect epithelial root sheet. And they lay down the age of your dentin, so that is your apex of genesis. Then physiologically, the root formation is completed. The multipotent dental pulp stem cells, so these stem cells are present at the apex, uh, especially in an immature young community. So they are seeded onto the existing uh, dental walls. They differentiate into odontoblasts and they deposit the tertiary or the age of your dentin. Uh, you also have the uh, stem cells from the human exfoliated uh, deciduous teeth, also called as a, a shed. So these also enable your pulp revascularization. The stem cells from the periodontal ligament also they proliferate and they grow into the apical third. They also can deposit your uh, heart tissue formation uh, at the apex as also in the lateral canal walls. The stem cells from the apical papilla play a very important role. Uh, uh, they uh, once instrumented uh, beyond the apex when you induce bleeding, uh, these uh, uh, mesenchymal cells, undifferentiated mesenchymal stem cells from the pulp uh, help to regenerate the pulp tissue. So the blood clot here acts as a rich source of growth factors. So it can be platelet-derived growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, platelet-derived epithelial growth factor, and tissue growth factors. All these growth factors help in the regeneration of the pulp tissue. 
So what you see here, the dental stem cells, mainly it is a stem cells from the dental follicle, there is stem cells from your apical papilla, there is stem cells from the dental pulp itself, and there's also your periodontal ligament stem cells. So all these stem cells can regenerate the pulp tissue. Finally, I like to conclude saying that vital pulp therapy is an alternative to conventional endodontic therapy. Power, accurate diagnosis of the pulp status is very important. Case selection plays a very important role in the prognosis of the treatment. So either you can do a partial pulpotomy or better only a part of the affected coronal pulp tissue is removed or a cervical pulpotomy wherein you completely remove the coronal pulp tissue. Uh, thereby you maintain the vitality of the healthy pulp in the root canal. Apexification, it gives you a biological seal at the uh, apex wherein a calcific barrier is created at the apex and enables us to complete the endodontic therapy, enables us to uh, condense the gutta percha as operative material. So the MTA is better than calcium hydroxide in its ability to generate a, a harder, a faster, uh, effective calcific barrier formation. So thank you. Uh, thank you for your patient uh, listening. Have a good day. Thank you.